Well, let's cross over to studios in Washington. Joining us from there is human rights activist Randy Short. Mr. Short, as always, thank you for joining us here on Press TV. Now, what is being reported by this rapporteur from the UN is nothing new. Stage collusion was raised time and time again with regards to the uh, repression of the Muslim community there. Why did it take so long for the UN to come up with this conclusion? Uh, it, it's not so much that it took so long. Who funds the UN? Who are the dominant nations in the UN? I, I think the United States gives a disproportionate amount of money for the UN's operation, as well as the other countries in Europe. So they, they don't really have an interest in, in the lives of, of Muslims, in particular poor minority groups, and just, just maybe capitalism and, and finance, as you look at, Myanmar has recently opened up its uh, country to foreign investment. Some of these countries that uh, put money into the UN, they don't want to anger the government there. I mean, uh, Myanmar is a new frontier for investment, for infrastructure, for construction, for energy. For these countries in Europe, just earlier in your, uh, your, the top five, you're talking about the problems economically in Europe. Why would these countries speak up for a poor, hated Muslim minority group when they stand to get money to invest in their sagging economies? And I'll go one step further. One thing that all these countries want is energy. I believe that where the Rohingyas live in Myanmar is uh, along the west coast. Uh, offshore drilling is in the offings, the same way that Chevron and other American energy groups such as uh, General Electric and others are interested in that country's energy sector. I believe that these people are being cleansed so there can be access to do offshore drilling to get these people out of the way. And of course, you have to get the approval of the government of Myanmar to drill and to bring your corporations in. So there's this corporate interest that trumps the human lives of these people who've suffered for centuries, and the government has always been complicit. If they claim to be in charge of that state and killing happens, they're at fault. So everyone looks the other way as these people are slaughtered. Right, now that's so far as the West goes, but what about within Myanmar itself? Where are those so-called human rights activists like Aung San Suu Kyi, who pioneered human rights uh, and won the Nobel Peace Prize? Where is she? Why isn't she speaking up about this? You're, you're too kind. Her father is a, 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 a xenophobic, racist type of ethnocentric politician in Myanmar. She's not different from her father. So, I mean, it runs in the family to do nothing for the Rohingya. Uh, she has a peace prize, but so does uh, F.W. de Klerk. So does Henry Kissinger, and for that matter, Barack Obama, who's making war all over the world, has a peace prize. What does that really mean to me? Forgive me for asking you. It doesn't mean much these days, especially when it comes down to the lives of Muslims or Africans or people in the third world. Uh, basically, you give them a prize for how many they kill. Okay, we're going to have to leave it there. Human rights activist Randy Short there joining us from Washington. Uh, Mr. Short, as always, it's a pleasure having you here on Press TV.